In this video I'll include 7 ways to shoot 645 film plus mention a few other popular options. Stay with me until the end and I'll announce this month's winner for the monthly giveaway. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLucker.com. Okay, so I pulled out a few different cameras if you want to shoot 645 film. Four of the options in front of us are 645 format film cameras. I've got two different camera 645 options and then this one's a bit of an imposter but I'll explain more about that as we get into the video. Okay, so the question you may have is which camera is right for you? It really depends on what is your preference and what you want from your camera. Do you prefer waist level viewfinder cameras such as this Mamiya 645 or do you prefer something perhaps a bit more SLR like such as this Hasbrad H2? Are you looking for a camera suited to taking portraits or do you want something perhaps for travel or documentary photography or perhaps even a point and shoot camera such as this GA645? If the size of the camera is high in your list, then folding cameras such as those made by Fuji are some of the smallest 645 cameras you can buy. There are some much older folding 645 cameras similar to maybe something like this, which is even smaller. But in terms of having mod cons and more features, these are some of the smallest 645 format film cameras you can get. If you love your point and shoot cameras, then you'll probably definitely like the GA645. This is a medium format point and shoot camera and is a bit of an ugly duckling plastic beast which is extremely noisy if I turn it on. <laughs> this is not a stealth shooter. This is not a quiet camera. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend this to weddings and I wouldn't recommend this to streets. It's just too noisy and the autofocus is way too slow. That said, if you're happy to go to a slower pace, this camera can take amazing pictures and it has a really great lens. The Fuji GA645 Professional, similar to the Hasblad, uses a leaf shutter lens, meaning you can sync your flash right up to the maximum, which makes this camera great for strabis work and flash photography in bright conditions. If you prefer something more manual, then something like the GS645 might be better suited to you. So this is a bellows camera, which means it folds flat and then you have to pop the front to open the camera to be able to take your picture. This is a slightly longer lens than the GA645, it's a 75 3.4, but it's another amazingly sharp lens from Fujinon, which gives a modern look and kind of, I'd say, a modern rendering. This does fold really nice and compact, and unlike many other cameras, it has a vertical viewfinder compared to a horizontal viewfinder. Almost all the controls are on the front of the lens, similar to more vintage cameras or, say, large format lenses. And then you need to make sure the lens is fully retracted before you try to close it. Now the limitation with these small Fuji cameras is they're obviously fixed lens cameras. So if you want to have a system camera where you can have multiple lenses, then you'd be better looking at something like the Mamiya 645 or the Hasblad in terms of the two I'm showing you. As I say, I'll include more options at the end. The advantage of a systems camera is you can have multiple lenses, multiple film backs, different viewfinders. Whereas with the cameras like this, it's kind of what you see is what you get. Then depending on your preference, you may be happy with manual focus lenses. In this case, Mamiya 645 Super. This is a waist level viewfinder camera, but you can also get the Prism as well. The advantages of this camera is it's a system camera. It's pretty small and compact. There are a huge amount of lenses available for this camera, and I would say it's probably one of the more affordable options, even if the price has gone up in recent years. If you prefer autofocus, Hasblad H2 might be better suited for you. And it comes with an 80mm f2.8 kit lens. The same as the Mamiya, which also comes with an 82.8 kit lens. This is a heavier camera and it's a lot more automated, as you can see. It's kind of got the SLR style design. It's got an interchangeable film back, the same as the Mamiya. And the battery is the, the hand grip, so it's a nice design. You just pop this switch and there's your battery. The viewfinder in this camera is amazing. See that video for full details and the lens is available. Now what if you've already got bigger film format cameras but you want to try 645? If you've got a 6x7 Mamiya RB or Mamiya RZ or RZ I guess I should say being English, you can also get a 645 film back for the Mamiya. So this now allows me to shoot 645 film in the Mamiya RZ67 Pro 2 that I've got. And this probably feels like a complete waste of real estate if you want to call it that because the Mamiya RZ is a massive camera or it's a big weighty camera and so you're only going to be using half the negative if you're using this film back. The advantage of using 645 film backs such as this one and the one for the Hasblad is you're going to get more photos per your roll of film. You can see there the 645 aperture on the back. Equally if you've got a 6x6 Hasblad you can also get the A16 film back and you might think yeah, but it's got a square a square hole, so it's going to take square photos. Well, if you pull the dark slide, you'll see behind that, you've got a horizontal format 645 film aperture. So this means when you're shooting in standard orientation, 
With your waist level viewfinder pointing up, you're going to take horizontal photos. This is great for say landscapes or for anything that you shoot horizontal, but for me I tend to shoot mine as portrait orientation to get the vertical and so for that reason I'm better off using a prism finder on my Haspad 500cm or Haspad 501c to be able to shoot portraits in the, the vertical orientation. And the reason I've got the Billy Record 2 on the table is not because it shoots 645 film, it's because I just wanted to point out some of the 6x9 vintage cameras. You can get a mask that will then allow you to shoot 6x9 and also 645 in the same camera. And so that is another option to shoot 645 film in a really compact setup. Now one camera I mentioned in my recent Contax video is the Contax 645 camera. I think of it very similar in many regards to my Hasblad H2 in terms of slightly automated with the SLR style design. Okay, so the question is, of all these cameras, which is my favourite? The answer is it depends on what I'm shooting. If I'm shooting portraits, I tend to much prefer the Hasblad to my Mamiya 645 because I seem to miss focus a lot more on the Mamiya than I've ever done on the Hasblad. I don't have 2020 vision and the Hasblad is autofocus and it's very good autofocus as well with a really excellent kind of viewfinder, prism viewfinder. This gives me a higher hit rate and being a Hasblad lens, the image quality is fantastic. However, if I want to shoot, say, landscape or travel photography, this I would not choose this for travel photography. It's just too big and too heavy. So for that, I would choose probably the GA645 because I enjoy that the wider lens being only a 60mm lens, which is equivalent to 35mm in full frame terms. The reason I still have the Mamiya 645 is because it has the amazing 80mm 1.9 lens and that is regarded as one of the best lenses for any film camera. Big advantages of the Mamiya for example is the lens is much cheaper and the camera itself is much cheaper than the Hasblad equivalent. I definitely recommend this if you're a point and shoot kind of guy but want something with a, a larger negative. And equally if I want to shoot 6x6 and 645 on the same trip I would usually take my Hasblad with two film back, so I'll take one 6x6 film back and one 645 film back. So to summarize when working out which camera is best for you, obviously take into account the size and the, the format of the camera itself, but then also make sure you look at the lenses available. Are you gonna be happy with a fixed lens or do you need more options in terms of interchangeable lenses? If you're looking at interchangeable lenses, you want to buy the system that's got the best lenses, not buy the camera first and worry about the lenses after. So for example, if you want the super fast 81.9 lens, definitely look at the Mamiya 645. If you want autofocus and are happy to pay a higher price tag, you can use the modern lenses, which are still in production, Hasblad HC lenses on the Hasblad H2, for example. If you want the smallest possible setup, I'd probably look at getting a vintage camera and just search on eBay for a vintage 645 folding camera. Other popular 645 cameras I don't own but you definitely may want to check out include things like the Mamiya 645 AFD if you want autofocus lenses. This is more of an SLR style design as you can see and you can get lenses for, from both Phase 1 and Mamiya. Both of these lenses will fit this camera. Another popular option in a similar design is the Pentax 645. I've never used this camera personally but I know it was popular in its day. Uh, these as you can see will have a bit of an SLR design based on the box shape origin. And I think the camera I'd most like to try is the Bronica 645 rangefinder camera. This is said to have really nice lenses and give really nice results. And as you can see, it's reasonably compact. One day, hopefully, I'll try one. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. And equally, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you want me to do something similar for 6x6, again, let me know in the comments and perhaps I can put together a 6x6 camera video. As always, a massive thanks to my amazing patrons and feel free to subscribe if you want a chance of winning any monthly giveaways. And this month's winner is Dexter1980 Dexter. Congratulations, please get in touch to claim your prizes. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.